last time we talked, me and you, Brock Purdy wasn't a factor. He, I didn't even know who Brock Purdy was. Now, I mean, he he makes appearances and he he gets standing ovations. He like kisses babies. He's over there. He's he's regal. He's the freaking prince of Santa Clara. And even though his right arm doesn't work so good right now, he got the first crack at the podium today. He is the leader in the clubhouse. What do you think of the way he acted, his demeanor, and what he said? Because he said one thing that really stuck out to me. So his demeanor to me is always fantastic, just like Trey Lance. And by the way, this can be said about Sam Darnold, too. They're all so respectful, kind. True. They answer every question. True. They're very nice. They're very professional. They speak. Yeah. Very, they're well-spoken. They So they're all fantastic in that way. I actually – so I think something that um, I really enjoyed from his presser is – how honest he was about his own flaws. And I thought it was something that's very different from hearing Jimmy Garoppolo when there's direct questions asked about Even Trey. Trey won't talk about his mechanics. Right. And I thought Brock Purdy, on the other hand, and and this is why I guess perhaps I have a little bit more faith. I know there's there's always this long-term ceiling question with Brock Purdy, right? And the comparison's always Jimmy. Well, I think maybe Brock Purdy is just that person that's a little bit more... I don't want to say Jimmy isn't that guy, but maybe Brock Purdy is the guy that goes out of his way to work on his flaws and make sure that they're getting better. And I thought it was great that he season. talked he about run how from early it. and how yeah. earlier in the season. And I was talking about this just yesterday with our mutual friend, Rob Guerrera, and he and I actually had this entire sequence of talking where we talked about how Brock Purdy at the beginning of the year, the best I thought he played was the Miami game and the Tampa Bay game where back foot hit the ground and ball would get out. And then he started making plays off schedule. And then you had plays like the Raiders game, right? Where it's process over result. The kid will play rolling out left is cool, but you got to make that throw to Jennings. And you see the first half against Dallas where he's running out of the pocket. He's running out of clean pockets. What are you doing? And then the second half against Dallas, it's not that he made any big time throws. He just started playing quick, clean, efficient quarterback. And he talked about that entire process of how he went from doing what Shanahan and Greasy told him to feeling himself and thinking he could make some more plays off schedule. Mm -hmm. So now he's working on making sure that he's playing quickly and fast and on time and on schedule. And I thought that was great because to me, Mm -hmm. if we're talking about the archetype of Brock Purdy becoming a great quarterback, he has to become the master of playing on time and on schedule from the pocket. Right. That's what Drew Brees was. Great. That's what Drew Brees was. Yeah. And his off. Because dude, you're not Russell Wilson, man. Here's the thing. You're not Russell Wilson. You got a nice, uh, you got a nice 10 yard burst. You're quick. Um, Russell Wilson in his prime ran a four five. Right. Okay. Russell Wilson had one of the strongest arms in the league, the best deep ball I've seen in a long time. I remember when Russell Wilson won the NFC championship game against the Niners, Vic Fangio was in the locker room that day. He came down after the game and we were asking him about, well, you know, how come you couldn't contain Russell Wilson? He was like, guys, as a runner, he's like prime Barry Sanders. I'll never forget. He said that. Now, maybe that was a bit of an exaggeration, but dude, he was that good at 24 years old. Brock's not like that. I mean, I know, we, I know, we think Brock Purdy's a pretty thick guy. He's not skinny, but He's Russell Wilson like was what two twenty five. Yeah, yeah. So you got to be Drew Brees, man. Drew Brees was the quickest decision maker, the best decision maker, and the most accurate passer. And even he only won one Super Bowl. So you, yeah, got, Brock, I mean, there is no margin he's a here. Way better. He, I mean, Drew Brees was a good athlete. Brock Purdy has definitely got higher foot quickness than Drew yep. Brees. Like he's a good athlete and. Definitely, I think with Brock Purdy, like this is where I kind of push back on the playmaking stuff because even though he's not the biggest guy and he's not the strongest guy, he has a natural knack to slide and move and make something happen off schedule. It's a natural thing that he does, and he's done it since he was at Iowa State. And and the the longer the play goes, like the more of a weapon he is. Exactly. He's he's good. Yeah. Exactly. But if you can use that where you only use it in spurts and rather than him being reliant on it, because I think if he is reliant on it, with his stature, his arm hurt. talent, I don't think it's sustainable for him to get play hurt. that way. But if he can balance that out where he just Also, plays. also, also, the, the team is too good. The talent right. is too good. The coaching is too good. You don't need to do that. That's what you had to do at Iowa State. You don't right. need to do that right. here sometimes. Right. But right. most of the time, you just need to execute. Right. Yeah. And if he's able to do that and if he's able to take that step, then great. The Niners have their quarterback, you know, of the future, and he's that guy. But – If he plays the same way, I think that that process is a little bit scary of him running outside of the pocket so much. I don't think it's sustainable. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Um, One thing I want to say about him that he said in this press conference, it was right after Shanahan. And Shanahan was very, 
he kept saying like you know like the expectation is that Brock's gonna play. I don't know if he right. said that exact words, but he made it sound real. Hello, hold on, I'm here. Just a second. No, hold on, wait, that's not the right one. Oh, he switched here? the cameras. I didn't mean to switch the camera. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's weak. This, this is this is a commercial for the camera company, by the way. It's the not exactly the AK and the computer camera is crazy. Woo! That was terrible. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about? Brock Purdy, great you were quarterback. Talking about Brock Purdy. Great. What stood out to you from what he said in his press? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so Kyle kept saying like, yeah, the expectation. He's gonna be back week one. Like Lynch has said it. Kyle said it. Like we expect if everything goes right. He used a different word. He was like, well, it's that's the goal. That's the goal. It's a good goal to have. And I was thinking like the difference between a goal and an expectation. Like the goal is to win a football game. You can expect to win a game, but that doesn't mean you will. That's your goal. Like an expectation is like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to give it my best effort. Like that, that's for sure an expectation. But there's a difference between an expectation and a goal. And I think Brock made that real clear. Like, yeah, you know, God willing, and everything goes right. Yeah, you're sure. But like no freaking idea and neither do they. So we'll see. I thought it was kind of interesting. 100%. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's the key, right? If everything works out with his timing of his return, he probably takes the job week one to week 17. And the reason, I mean, prediction is a prediction. I, I just kind of throw it out there right now because honestly it doesn't matter who I think is going to start today week one or who I think is going to start today week 17. I just said a random name, whatever. But I do mm -hmm. think the reason I also said that logically was just simply because I just don't understand how that timeline is going to work out. And I think the way the competition works out, the Niners are going to want him because I think he might be the only definitive answer at that point because he has the 8-0 and equity. I just, as much as I am bullish on Trey Lance's projection if he gets an opportunity to play, as much as I think Sam Darnold could do well with the 49ers in this situation with these weapons, all of that, I don't know if either of them in this particular offseason will be able to... Um... Check it. Check it. No, I people think people, people not feeling your mic. Uh, is it, are you good? Yeah, it seems okay to me. I'm not sure. I didn't change. Maybe you it. just need to lean a little bit closer to it. A little bit closer. How's that? Yeah, that's better. That's better. It's. I okay. think. Uh, yeah, you got to be a little bit closer to it. Sorry about that. Okay, people good just, to know. Yeah, there you go. But either way, yeah. either way, what I was mentioning was simply that. Um, I think that that timing of when he returns and all of that, it just doesn't feel right. And we talked about how imperative it was that the 49ers have definitively a guy. And I just don't think in this time period they will have definitively a guy where he might be the only definitive yeah. a guy and they might want to play him that way. I, what I think is so interesting about Brock Purdy is that we don't really know him. We don't really know any of these quarterbacks, but we think of him as like this aw shucks last pick in the draft, whatever you need, coach, I'll do whatever. But he's got a little standing now. You know, he won some playoff games. He's 8-1. Mm -hmm. and one. You know, he gets standing ovations wherever he goes. Like, he's a freaking local legend right now. And, you know, he he's not just a guy. Like, he is the he's the leader in the clubhouse. He might be the future here. And I think he's not going to say it, but we're learning. Like, does he have a little leverage here? You know, if the Niners are pushing him to start week one and him and his team feel that's not the right thing for him, like, is he going to – Push back privately, like I, I, I don't know. His Brock Purdy is palpable, right? His yeah, and like his dad was a professional field. athlete. Like he, he's not like a, a rube. He's got people in his corner. He knows what he's doing. I mean, it's, it's very interesting. Very his, interesting. his confidence is special, dude. It's yeah, special. he never yep. lost his points poise nope. once last year, and even today, for a guy going through the injury, having to deal with questions, at the end of the day, that is the third overall pick that's nipping at his heels and heels and trying to come back and retake the job that was originally his, not Brock Purdy's. Then you have Sam Darnold, a veteran with all this talent in the world. And Brock Purdy didn't seem phased by any of that. He seemed to basically be like, I'm going to get myself healthy. And if I'm healthy, things will work itself out. So he, I love, I love the confidence that was portrayed by both of the 49ers quarterbacks that were remaining on the roster from last year to this year in both Brock Purdy and Trey Lance, but I think Purdy's confidence is off the charts. It's unreal. You can feel it. Yeah. And last thing I want to say about Purdy before we move on to Darnold, like, I don't even know how likable Purdy is. Like, I don't know that they even like him. They just respect him. How do you not respect him? Like, he told George Kittle essentially to shut up on television. And now he may tell the whole organization, like, look, guys, 
I'm going to do what's best for me. It's also what's best for the franchise. So stop pushing me. Like, we don't know. But if he told George Kittle to shut up, he might just, I'm not, he's not being subversive, but he's standing up for himself. He's standing up for himself, which is very important. You got to do it. I think that's what was part of what made the story of his situation last year so special because he kind of earned respect immediately in what we thought was a very difficult situation with how down the team was after Garoppolo got hurt, how much they believed in Garoppolo and all of that. And we thought it was kind of an unwinnable locker room as long as Garoppolo was still there. And he was still kind of looming over Purdy's shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. The first couple Purdy starts, we were all under the impression that Garoppolo was going to return. And then we saw him play and we're like, no, 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 you cannot reinsert Garoppolo, even if he is healthy, because this guy is playing better than him. And I think what was really impressive during that time and what blew seemed to blow his teammates away was Brock Purdy didn't come in trying to be their friends or all of that. He came in and he said, this is my chance for this opportunity, and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure it happens. He didn't worry about the dynamics of his relationship with George Kittle. He just worried about how can George Kittle help me do my job. And I think inherently he got a respect immediately because – the team could see that he's just all about winning and doing his job and doing what's best for the team. And, you know, I don't know if he needs to necessarily be personable and you need to say, well, I love talking to this guy or like this guy as much as I respect how this guy does his job and how it helps me do mine. So clearly, yeah, he's not real social. I seen him in the locker room. He's just in his locker doing his work. People respect. Right. 